Yeah, I'm going to post it. I'm going to do it. Imagine a world where a holiday meant to celebrate the laborers and their unions for keeping the country running was subjugated by unemployed drunk idiots pissing on the side of the road and trashing the beach. Imagine that world. Well, imagine no more. Just visit South Georgia in the summertime. Come down to Bacteria Beach and have a good time. We welcome one and all. So grab your adult diapers and put your Venmo on the back of your car and come on down to Tybee Island, Georgia. That's right. Fill her up, baby. Oh, I am. I am. Got my diapers. You really, really filled me up on that one. What a tasty cocktail. Well, cheers and welcome to From Behind the Barcast, the podcast for bartending, service industry, drinking in general, and putting Venmo on the back of your car. Yes, that's <laughs> actually what we all stand for here. We're only here for <laughs> rear vehicle Venmo. Today is Labor Day. We're recording on a Monday night. This will come out on Tuesday. But uh, happy Labor Day to all you unemployed some bitches. We work on a holiday for you guys. <laughs> this, is that right? We're, this is a labor of love. This is a labor of love. This week we have a, a new segment called Five Meh Minutes with Clint, where he can either talk about his Marvel nerddom and a fucking, or a, he can tell me how many views of fucking Spider Man trailer got mm-hmm. over the weekend <laughs> or you can talk about georgia football for five for five I, minutes. I have to make a i have to make a, a decision yeah, i can't one, yeah. i can do 230 and 230 nope, it's gotta you pick, split it gotta it's pick just, one it's just like wings at certain places well, you, you they're want, like you get 12 wings you can't do six and six do you want to know what i'm gonna start with clint's gay so gay now as you all know the georgia bulldogs kicked ass this week dominated clemson with a timers on tough, <laughs> a tough ten three win. Um, you can hear my voice a little bit. I'm a little hoarse. That's from yelling at my house with two other people there who both took naps during the game. <laughs> I'm gonna use that for part of the segment because my buddy Richard came down from Charleston and fell asleep on my back porch in the second quarter. And Fro passed out. I took a halftime nap, so yeah. we'll kind of let that one slide. But uh, the dogs dominated defense all day. To be fair, though, now I was at work and I couldn't necessarily watch the game very much, even though it was on right behind me. We were super fucking busy, obviously, Labor Day weekend. First game of the year, Clemson, that's all huge. Yeah, I mean, massive massive turnout. I mean, the most watched game of the weekend for sure. Oh, yeah. And and it's it's the only top five matchup all season long. It was pre-ranked the most important playoff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Top five. The only two time two teams in the top five. Oh, in the top that are both that in are the gonna top play. There is a scheduled game. Oh, what, what, what are their what are their ranks? I didn't Well even... it was Clemson at three and Georgia at five, but after the game tonight oh. that'll flip to Georgia probably at two. Yeah. You beat the number number three team. Yeah. Um, soundly, they didn't score a touchdown for the first time since 2014. Yeah, so I understand game. why they might have fallen asleep, you know, like every time I turned around it was like it was a lot of action though. Yeah, a lot, I mean, a lot I mean, of defensive action. I, man, I wouldn't know. I was fucking busy. I was, uh, I, I was, I was shocked at how well we went. Two minutes and thirty seconds. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so about Marvel. <laughs> nope. Um, but glorious game. Cooked a lot of food. Had a pretty good time. Vinny came over here and hung out with me, and we hugged a bunch and danced around, which That's further nice. injured my broken ribs. Yeah. So um, you hurt your. Well, we'll talk about the, rib we'll get later. To the ribs I'll, later. I'll, I want to get don't your. T- don't, uh, take, don't take away my sunshine. <laughs> but uh, so, you brought over some of the standing rib roast. Uh, yeah, I made a stand. Got some, got some food cooking downstairs. We got some got, taters boiling downstairs. We're a, a good, a good meal to celebrate the dogs' win. Yeah. It was just, you know, this is the biggest game we're going to play until we play Alabama in this huge championship. Right. And so, Alabama fucking crushed. And Alabama uh, crushed it with their rookie quarterback having the best game any Alabama quarterbacks ever had in their. Yeah, first but remember game. they won that national championship with the second string. Like yeah. he dude got hurt like halfway through the first fucking quarter. Yeah, I went to the game. That was a Georgia Alabama game. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. It hurts me on the other ribs now. Yeah, that was just terrible. It was, the thing is, it was Jalen Hurts got yeah. hurt, then Tua came in. And yeah, and just fucking. Because there's no tape on the guy. The guy had only played like yeah. 30 minutes total in his whole career. So Came out like but a banshee. But whooping the shit out of Clemson made me so happy. And I'll uh, go ahead and bow it early because I would normally be rocking my Georgia shirt to represent the win. But instead, we now have for sale from behind the Barcast shirts. On the air, from behind the Barcast, and then on the back. We've says, got- worst podcast ever, says Karen S. And a QR code. That you so can you, just scan from up you can to? Scan, you can't get the t-shirt scanning that, but you can find yeah. our podcast, which we are on all the major podcast yes. distributors. We, we are on Apple. message if you want to. We are on Spotify. We are on Anchor. We are on all of them. But you can just DM us on Instagram through From Behind the Barcast, or you can email us at FromBehindTheBarcast at gmail.com. We're going to give away one free shirt if you leave a fucking voicemail on anchor.fm forward slash From Behind the Barcast. One free shirt, no, no double XL. We don't have any of those yet. Yeah, but, uh, sorry. It's, 
Sorry, neckbeards. Yeah, but uh, leave, a, leave a voicemail. It's got to be something we can actually use. Don't just be talking random like, shit. Hey, hey, gays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Don't um, do that. So today we brought our friend Vincenzo here. You're not going to see her here. Actually. You know, give, give Vinny a little, hey. Check him out on the uh, Instagram reel we just shot with him learning how to use the uh, typewriter 5000 or whatever. The Google Tron 1000. Google Tron 1000. That's a Smith Cornet used by Kurt Vonnegut. That's Kurt Vonnegut's uh, typewriter. Not, it wasn't his. They, we didn't get it from his estate. We can just pretend. Was, we yeah, just, yeah, that was What's he going to do? Get mad? He typed Cat's Cradle on this very typewriter. Uh, yeah, right and here. Cry, I cried when I heard it. I cried when I heard it as well. Um, in other news, here on Tybee Island, Georgia, weed has been decriminalized, Woo! which is pretty fucking great. Like, I mean, every fucking body, probably besides me, smokes down here. Yeah, yeah. But, on the other hand, masturbating has not been decriminalized. I know you'd think you could masturbate, especially if you do it really fast. Quick, if, you, if you're just out there, you fucking pop the bean out, get your little fucking battery in there. Yeah, boom. yeah. You think it was so? There was a woman that was arrested. Yeah, on yeah. Tybee. Please tell the story because I'm not in, super in the in the in the, uh, in the last couple weeks. The date is kind of sketchy, but anyways, she was it was at dusk. The sun was still up. People <laughs> so were out there with their children. The mood was really set. Yeah, yeah. She was really <laughs> feeling herself, literally. And this woman pulled out a sex toy and proceeded to just hammer it home. Diddle it off. And she was only there, according to the people that reported her, for about five to ten minutes. And she got up and left. They had called the police. Wait, did she arrive? Just for that purpose, do you she think? She came like, down there, got a nut, and she, got out. She walked down, laid a towel, laid a towel down, down, pulled out the fucking got rabbit. Comfortable, you know, got comfortable, kind of maybe, I don't know. I didn't know. Maybe said a prayer to herself. She's I don't got know. some fetish where she has And then she outside. fucking drove it home and then kind of laid there in her afterglow and then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then shipped out. So the people that called the cops called and said this is what happened. And she was an attractive woman. Like she was probably, I'd, I'd give her a seven. Like eight, what, what age do you think? Uh, between 25 and 30. Oh, okay. 32? I don't know. Somewhere in there. See, I mean, I just imagine she'd be like in her mid-50s. Like, this, no, is what, this, yeah. this is what I do, baby. It, this is it's how not, I get it, off. If you had lined up 10 girls and been like, pick who it was, I'd have been like, what's well, not her? Yeah, right. Like, yeah. So they found her down, the cops found her down the street, found said sex toy in her bag, and she was Evidence arrested. still in the bag. Yeah, she <laughs> was arrested weapon. for it. And she said she didn't know how she was seen doing it because she got off in 30 seconds. <laughs> That was her defense <laughs> to the police. Not that I didn't do it, but that I did it so fast. How could they tell? Don't you wish all girls could get off in 30 seconds? That would be amazing. I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> you. Hope, she, she's the baby, you got me. about 30 seconds. She's so she has to go to court soon. Yeah. Well, yeah. So in, when she goes to court, she uh, had to call and talk to you know people at the police station. And apparently, the word is she's telling people that she is an undercover agent of some sort. And that if they don't pull the charges down, that it's going to blow her cover of what she's been doing for, I can't remember what government agency she said she the was The CIA, for. obviously. The CLIT. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she's just in there. She is the click commander. She's I the forgot. click commander. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't rub her the wrong way. I knew, I knew there was someone. I knew there was a click commander down there. Yeah. Here. yeah. Jesus. But, but she apparently is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this, is, this story will receive an update when she goes yes, to the day yes, of court. It, it has In fact, to. I'm considering just going to court that day. Just because, you know, you can, everyone can go. It's t- yeah, it's uh, uh, oh, court I'm, on Tybee's. Court Tuesdays. Is, 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 uh, but but no, Tuesdays. no, no, no. But uh, I've had to go to court before and still made it to work on time. Yeah, but I work downtown. Right. But maybe we can court get. Court goes from like two to four or something like that, I think. We might be able to get our third member here to go and uh, give us a. A representation. Yeah, well, maybe we know someone that works for the police station uh, here. Maybe we can. How just... long have we lived in this town? <laughs> know, yeah. Right. So we're going to get this, this, this story, yeah. we'll get. Updated. To be continued. Oh, updated. I wonder oh, if she was dude. loud. I wonder if she was like over there. Just, like, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Ah! What, what? I wasn't doing it. Yeah. Ah! I wonder if she was like, I got some sand in there. Can you? You think she had like a specialized toy that was like sand it, it, and uh, salt proof? It's just like when you put rain X on your fucking windshield so the water doesn't <laughs> stick to yeah, it. There's like yeah. some, some kind of luby scotch she just guard. She it in her purse, which means there's all kinds of. <laughs> she had a butterscotch attached to it. There's a fucking cigarette butt. She pulls out her, pulls out her wallet later. You're like, the wallet smells kind of weird. See your ID? Actually, hold your ID back a little bit, ma'am. Uh, we are drinking today. We're drinking a Rancho Cucamonga Margarita. I think yeah. it's called. Yeah, it's got a ancho. Ch- it's a it's a good ancho pi- chili liqueur, ancho chili which liqueur. is fucking amazing. Pineapple, yeah. pineapple, jalapeno, uh, jalapeno, uh, Don As Julio, Don, Don Julio. Julio Silver Tequila. We put pictures of it up. Actually, would you pass me that? I'm yeah, yeah. Drink put, a little put, bit more. Put a little reel up of a uh, of that. Boom! The pressure. Woo! <laughs> it's better than what happened last week <laughs> on our break. We're sitting there and no one has touched the no shaker one's even near it, and it just goes. Way up in the air, and we're both like, oh, it's the ghost of Temple Grandin. 
So she's not dead. She's she, still alive. Yeah, she's about to do a podcast. She's doing a podcast. Not ours. <laughs> not ours. <laughs> not yet. But not hey, yet. guess who's going to be commenting gonna, on that podcast? <laughs> that's going to be our biggest. You think get. she types in all caps? <laughs> she's just yelling. She'd last about three minutes, and she would get t- tired of me. <laughs> Old Temple Brandon. <laughs> We can't. Oh. Well, we did skip last week without talking about Temple Grandin, so that yeah. was dope. I know, but I, she was in my thoughts and prayers, though. <laughs> so, she um, wouldn't masturbate on a beach. So you were just on the way. So uh, we're the studios on Tybee Island, Georgia, and Clint lives on Whitmarsh, which is like a couple hours. Joining Island, or yeah. Whatever. But as you were coming down, you almost did, weren't able to There's, make it there, tonight. The, literally, if I had been five minutes behind, I wouldn't be at the, here now because – as I'm coming up to the, we have a long bridge called the Bull River Bridge. It's about, I don't know, what, a quarter mile. it's two mile lanes. Long. It's two lanes. There's no emergency lane. You're either, you're going one way or the other. That's it. You're in or out, baby. And so there's a wreck. As I approach, I see cars coming to me, headlights facing from both lanes. I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm the first car on the eastbound heading towards Tybee Lane. And there's eight cars that have all slammed into each other. And the person that I guess was with this group that was in front of this as it happened decided he would just stop. 40 or 50 feet in front of the wreck and park there so people couldn't just go around the wreck and keep going on the right lane they had to come past his car as well and so i'm getting nervous because i know how wrecks on tybee road go like if you don't get on you ain't getting That's on it. yeah especially on that small bridge because yeah. if there's if they have to get a tow truck or anything in yeah, there and one of the cars hit the bridge which means they gotta have the bridge inspected so yeah, an engineer has down. to fucking come out on labor day a yeah. fucking national holiday yeah. to inspect Making the bridge a man before do labor because <clears throat> you were gawking off the side of the sunset <laughs> yeah and you said there was like eight cars but they seemed like they were, they all, were all friendly they, they, they were all the same age they all got to know each other yeah and so i i kind of started getting forward and i talked to the guy behind me he said, we're gonna bully up here so we kind of get forward and kind of make it to where there's almost nowhere to get between the guy who shouldn't have his car parked there and the wreck and so finally it kind of slows down from it and a guy in a truck was coming and back pulled back in so i got by car behind me got by and they started going again and i looked back as i was coming you know you can kind of see the yeah. lights down the road but the police or the ambulance hadn't gotten there no. by the time you had gotten right because i knew that if i didn't get there before the cops did i wasn't getting across i didn't see the ambulance until i was almost to your house which means that ambulance didn't get there anytime soon oh wow but everybody but was, they don't seem like they needed an ambulance. everybody was out of their cars yeah Everybody was out of their cars. Cars were all trashed up. Well, I was just like today I, um, on my tiny little island that I live down here, I went to go buy those uh, Dutch gold taters that were going to go with the standing bit. rib roast I smoked. And my daring mm-hmm. of the week happened during that little trip. But uh, like everyone down like over this weekend, people have been driving like a fucking insane people. Like every any time I've like I haven't even tried to leave the island at all because that's yeah, it's, fucking, I mean, it's yeah. bananas. But it's like. Everyone loses it. Like, we, they're in such a hurry to go one mile. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, here, you know, they go, you know, like. And you would think it's like you're on vacation. You want to relax. Okay, so, yeah. You want to catch a nut on the beach. So, that, that brings me to, like, the, the, that's a great segue. Because I wanted to talk about this couple that I had yesterday. So, um, uh, right when I got to work at, like, 5 o'clock yesterday, I was taking over for Smoot. Holler Smoot, Tybee Ambassador. Mm-hmm. And yep. um, it's, it's, like, not super busy yet, but it's, like, it's starting to get busy. Um, I'd already kind of texted you. I was like, man, I don't have any content. I don't think, you know, but I spoke way too fucking soon. Cause Labor Day weekend. Cause is Labor Day, yeah. Filled. But well, the thing was like, we were dead from like five to seven. And then once seven hit, we started having an hour and a half wait for food for the next fucking six hours. It was fucking terrible. And every, everyone I told like, Hey, it's going to be an hour. I would write the, the time that they ordered down on their. Oh ticket. yeah. You did. That's such a good mm-hmm. move. You do that. <clears throat> and be like, if they, you know, cause everyone was like, Hey, so th- I'd be like, Hey, it's going to be an hour for food. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, it's cool, man. I know you're busy, man. Everything's fine. We're just going to chill and drink. Literally 15 minutes later, they're like, so you want to check on that food? And I'll be like, you ordered at 8.01. <laughs> it is 8.16. I told you one hour. I have this note here, whatever. But anyway, so we weren't busy yet. And this black, like older black couple came in. So they came in, and you could tell that they were feeling a little tentative. Because, like, if I were an older black couple and I walked into Huckapoo's on some days, I'd be like, these fucking redneck crap. Yeah, there's a lot lot of uh, questionable humans out there. So they could tell. They were like, I could tell that they were like. "Ah." Was this the point where Rick had his shirt off on the porch? This This way earlier. Way earlier. Okay. But um, so they came up, and they were like, you know, they were a little tentative. They were like, hey, could we order pizza from you, this and that? I was like, yeah, for sure. So they order it, and they were like, we're going to take it to go. And then uh, the husband got, like, a beer, and the wife just got some water. So they got waters, and then they drank them super fast, so I filled them right back up. You know, I was like, whatever. So we started to talk a little bit, and uh, we started hanging out. You know, I get to know them a little bit. And they were like, you know, people told us to come to this place, but we didn't think we'd really like it. I was like, oh, where are you guys from? I thought they were talking about Huckapoo's. They were talking about Tybee. Okay. So, um, 
uh, they were like, we're from Atlanta. I was like, why, why, why do people think you wouldn't like this place? They're like, because it's, you know, really slowed down, but we're on fucking vacation. I want to be slow right now. So just like you were saying, like, they were like, well, this is great. We're not in a hurry to be fucking anywhere. Exactly. You have nowhere you know to what? go. You don't need to be they're in a like, hurry to get to stop. like, we live in fucking Atlanta. Everything we do is rushed all the fucking time. She's like, I love. And I was like, well, you're lucky you're right here at like 530 right now because like it's normally way busier than this, whatever. So she's like, can you make me something with bourbon in it? I was like, yeah, what's like what you want? She was like, how's your how's your Kentucky mule? And I looked and we didn't have any goddamn ginger beer. So I was like, it's bad because we don't have any ginger beer. So I ended up making her some. I made her bullet, ginger, lime, lime juice, whatever. And she liked it. So then after like five more minutes, she was like, you know, we're going to take that food for here. And then we got nice. to, and then we got a customer right? and then we got to talking more. And it was like and I started to realize I was like, they probably man, they probably walked in here like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then so as as the interaction ends, she was like, thank you for being whatever. And I was like, yeah, no worries. She goes, well, really, the thing was you were so diligent about filling our waters up because I guess they're used to like if they go to places and order water, they get, like, get uh, water. You get one water. Right. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, no, man, fucking please order water. I want you. Everyone should be hydrated. And the husband goes, exactly. Can't everyone be fucking hydrated around here? <laughs> My man. Saying, you I know what it. I mean? Because, yeah, you, want, you, know, you, know, you don't want people drinking and not having water. And everyone says, sorry, I just want a water. I'm like, don't be fucking sorry. Drink fucking yeah. water. Drink water. I wish water. half my staff here would drink more water. <laughs> know, right? And leave their shirt on for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Did Mike's shirt come off too? Mike's shirt didn't come off. But see, I only saw Rick with his shirt off like way late at night. I just saw was... the Snapchat this morning. I didn't know what time it was. Oh, I didn't know there was a Snapchat. No, um, he wasn't like, I don't know if he was out on the deck. He came, uh, I, I mean, I pinched his nipple when he came back to uh, uh, behind he, the He rarely bar. behaves in that manner, so he was having a good time, and that's He's, okay. Dude, it was fucking Labor, or, you know, Labor Day Eve, whatever. Yeah. Dude, it was it's, like, but it's Sunday's the day. You know, people go hard I Saturday for football. That, I got to work. Sunday's the day. Bro, I forgot that. I, I was hungover as fuck from Saturday night. I fucking I took like two naps before I went. Because you were it. celebrating the Georgia win. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was doing. I was celebrating being gone from that fucking place. But um, so I went in and we were so slow from five to seven. I was like, bitch, Labor Day. What? What's la- What's Labor Day? Who are you? Who are all these people? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> ah! The thing was, normally it's like more younger people, but I only had like maybe like two groups of like. ID checking I, I people ID have level, to, yeah. yeah people, people have you to really gotta be like mm. and there's two like super suspect ones but i was like i don't fucking care i'll just charge you another <laughs> dollar just to make sure i get fucking tipped I don't it's, happy yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, happy, it's happy hour yeah it's happy hour that labor day happy did you make some you have a good weekend though I mean, yeah yeah we made, we made money yeah it was just like you know how it goes like the georgia it, games are rough because it's like the first football weekend and if the georgia game is a big game and it's the last game people don't uh don't have the thought here to start early they start or start late. They start early and then take a nap during the game on your back porch. <laughs> After I dis- explicitly discussed with my friend, "Hey, uh, man, it's five o'clock. You've had seven beers. Yeah, I've had a cocktail. Yeah. You know why? I want to watch the whole game. Yeah. Well, most people like, especially like because the football season, like you, you have like four or five months off where you're not intending to watch. You know, you're not yeah. watching football every Saturday, and so the- you forget that if there's a fucking seven o'clock game, don't start drinking it. Don't start drinking the noon game. You know, you got to get a Patriots stuff. Which and is hard not to because if there's any other game that you want to kind of watch. Yeah. Because, like, the first weekend of football. This is the biggest first weekend we've you're, ever you're had. You're ready to drink in there's all that six, fucking. six, like, ranked teams or yeah. like 12 ranked teams playing each other. You know, that's a big thing. So people are ready to drink, but they're not used to that football drinking. And you're ready to fucking soak in all the football you can because you're like, I'm going to watch I games mean, it was all day. Th- Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's yeah. a game tonight. Yeah, so it's like it be, yeah. you, if you, you don't have your reps in yeah. and you forget how to fucking drink on a game day. And then what makes it worse is if your team's not doing so well. Then you're, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm of that level where, like, if we're doing good, I'm just going to kind of yeah. keep going. But if it's not going well, I'm either going to drink too much or I'm just going to quit so I don't do something stupid like right. hurt myself. Like uh, break your rib or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that was Friday. I was pre-game and got hit it myself. Pre, there. pre. That's some, one of my the friends pre-game. put some undue pressure on me to go out and drink on Friday. <laughs> well, uh, you can't be talking about Vinny. No, <laughs> no, not Vinny at all. Not Vinny at all. But, hey, had a good time. So how did, how did the rib... How did the end? I, I was trying to like go around the corner of the bar Huckapoos. We've uh, ascertained through uh, process of elimination it had to be the concrete bar Huckapoos because it's when I'm standing up, it's about level with where my ribs are, and we didn't go or do anything anywhere else that that could have happened. And the way, like so how this broad is a forensic analysis, how, of, how broad of the, the injury is, it's my, it's it, it was something that was at least this wide. So once I got whacked with a two by four, it was definitely the concrete. Cause the bar Huckapoos is 
that thick and it's concrete. A, it's a slab of concrete with paint mixed into it. Yeah, so, yeah, so you uh, you hit it. It hits back. Um, I had a rib. It's funny that you said that because uh, back in that, it's probably been like 10 years ago now, but um, I was hanging out with my buddy James Lucas, Chuna, and we were watching Georgia, Alabama, and we scored late, which ended up having us win. But he always did this thing where he stuck his thumb like this, and he would jab me sometimes. You know, like playfully. A little playful jab. You know, well, this time he was so excited that we scored, he just fucking went full balls on me, and it literally stuck between two of my ribs and separated. Got you like this. I was out of work ribs. for the next fucking week. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go to work and cry I had about to it, go to I'm the going fuck, in. I had to go to the veterinarian to get a fucking x-ray because I couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, <laughs> as, as, as I told Baxter Ori when I told him about my ribs, the only time I've ever had cracked ribs is because my boy V, shout out to V, um, bald dude, big head. Say it like I, you said it yep, before. Yep. And you I tried uh, to grab his hot dog. He's got like the, the, the big guys, got that little, like, little thing of skin on the back of their neck. Well, I was drunk and it was my birthday and I grabbed a hold of it <laughs> and he uh, didn't appreciate it. He's a big, strong boy. He's he turned boy. and caught me with a, with a right hook to the rib cage. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and was like, oh man, you hurt me. And the next morning I got, was like, uh, I think you broke my ribs. And so I worked at the time at an orthopedic clinic. So I went in that m- next Monday night was like, can I get a little, little x-ray right here to see? And she's like, yeah, you have two cracked ribs, so you can't do A, B, C, D, E for the next few weeks. I'm like, awesome. So how are you feeling now? Like, you're, you, when, when can you fuck again? Uh, I mean, when are you ready? Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to paint you first. About two weeks. I'm going to paint a tasteful nude A first. tasteful nude, like um, when I go to French girls. Well, you don't have um, football games that happen at your spot, but the only problem is with, especially like big Georgia games, people come in and they squat, right? Like, they're there an hour before the game. They squat. They stay through the entire game. So then if they're sitting at the bar, people are trying to get between them all the time. <clears throat> so they act annoyed. Cause they, yeah, they're territorial about their spot at the bar. And, yeah, that's fine. That. and that's fine, whatever. But people are like, oh, big game day. You're probably going to make a lot of money. It's like, no, there's the same nine people sitting in the same spots who are ordering. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to And they're not going to get hammered. I mean, they are going to get hammered. Yeah, but I'm not going to make any more money. $200. No, and they're not going to tip anymore because, you know what I mean? Uh, actually, it's, it's I'm going to say your tip percentage is a lot better when Georgia wins than when they lose. No, well, yeah, I'm sure the metric is Georgia wins. Mm-hmm. I might get like 10% more or something like that. But the point of it is. Them sitting there that entire time, normally, let's say you're going out for a night of drinking. Even if you're, like, pretty hardcore about it, you know? You might show up at, like, 9 or 10. Yeah. And you leave at, like, 12 or 1 or something like that. Or you might close the bar down, whatever. But those are those super pro drinkers. Right. The people who love to sit around and watch football and just have some beers, they come in an hour before the game. The game lasts at least three and a half hours, sometimes four. And then they're there an hour after it. So they're spending five to six hours at a bar when typically they only spend two to three hours. Right. So, so double up their for, time. Double their time, double their intake. They're probably forgetting to pay their tab half the fucking time. And then or they've spent so much time there and they haven't drank for that long of a period of time in so long that they they're, that they've spent all the they spent more money than they intended to. Oh, they're backfired. And okay. then they're like, oh, fuck, man. Then they don't have it. They're like, dude, I'm sorry, man. I only have 40 bucks on me. I'll come back tomorrow, I promise. Oh, I'm like, sure you'll, you'll, you'll be hungover tomorrow. Because yeah, I'm going to be hungover tomorrow, too. Because, see, I have my game day ritual. Uh, if, if I'm going to drink. You go to the beach, pull out a <laughs> sex toy, and masturbate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's hard for me because I have to use one of those whole, like, bottom thigh things. So it's I got to put in, like, a duffel bag. But you stick it in the sand and stand up behind it. <laughs> um, so I knew... I knew a month ago, I knew when they scheduled this game. Yep. The Sunday after the Georgia-Clemson game, I'm ordering pho, because pho is my favorite food. Pho is my pho favorite. It's my pho favorite. And so I uh, had my buddy Richard in town, so we got some pho from the place that we both love. Get it delivered, and uh, I thank God I ordered extra broth, because they huh? put broth container in there. You know, it's just a plastic bag. It's, it's tied up. They tied up nice at the store. I get it from them all the time to go myself, but I had it delivered because I was hung over and injured. Yeah. And so Aww. I get it. And come, Richard picks up the porch, puts it down, and I guess one of the containers was spilled. And so when you pick the bag up, there's a small hole in the bag that pissed pho all over my kitchen. I am barefoot, and it's just everywhere. And I'm like, oh, oh, so I'll throw it in the sink, and I'm like, no, dog, get away. Do you always right. order extra broth, though? So I did because he was there. And usually I get, like, a, a large – I get the extra large pho, so it's a mm. big thing of broth, like 32 ounces. And then I'll get, like, an extra 16 ounce. This time I got an extra 16 and an extra 32. So it worked out fine. We had plenty of broth. But cleaning up pho instead of eating pho is annoying. And especially because, like – It's like if you got a pizza and it came to you and it was upside down yeah, in the box. Yeah, no, exactly, yeah. And you got to clean it up immediately. 
it, you cannot leave sticky broth no, no. laying around. And then, but yeah, because there's like bone marrow and all that fucking bone marrow beautiful and a dog collagen. Who's like, who's yeah. like, hey, hey man, hey, let me get a hold of that. And so then, even and it was already being delivered, right, by grub hovers. Yeah, like that. yeah. So it's already gotten cold. Yeah, so it's a little cold. And I so got now it's back getting, up. Now it's getting it's more a, it's cold. A, it's a process for me too, but like, it was it was an extra thirty minutes to, before while I could eat before I get my fuck. It was not. Was it? And you, and, you had, and you had two buddies over there. One buddy. Um, Fro had woken up and gone home. At after halftime? No, he, he, he. I'll give him credit. He was like two minutes left in the first half, and he kind of <laughs> nodded out. And the thing is, I a minute. If you hear my voice, I scream and yell at the game. I pace. Huh. So I'm up and down. Huh. I'm I'm huh. going from from inside the house to the outside <laughs> to like smoke. Through. I'm yelling at both places. And Richard's out there. I mean, Fro, Fro was asleep, but Richard was like. I bet, like I had to get him up and bring him like into apnea the apnea sleeve. Yeah, yeah. Like I was concerned for him, like check his pulse. So I got him. I was like, "You need to come lay on the couch." Like I know you're breathing because it's. Yeah, but like, he's got two kids. Doesn't sleep a lot. So he, I was like, "You know, he needs to sleep." Sure. So yeah. I, I, I get him up and. But Fro, he don't do a goddamn thing. No, all goddamn so he needs to be awake. God damn it! So I lay Watch him. I lay, I lay Richard down. I go check the beers. He was that was nine beers at this point. He had nine or t- ten beers. Were they like oh, craft the, beers? No, twelve ounce Budweisers, <laughs> and. I'd I have to pee I more come, than I have I come to sleep. Back in, if I you know, didn't come back in. Come back in. Halftime gets over. Third quarter starts. I'm in and out. I come back through. My dog is laid on the couch next to me. He's got his foot propped up on top of Dooley, like it's a damn foot rest. I, mean, I took that's some what selfies dogs with him. Sometimes, yeah, like, you know, people come. Are you saying you never rested your fucking leg on Dooley before? Not when I was passed out during a Georgia game. You ever wiped your hands on him when you're eating a sandwich? No. Have you ever let him peanut butter? No, no, no. Only on the beach. <laughs> Is he really your dog, then? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I don't do kisses. We already been over this. Did we talk about that last week? Yeah, yeah. no dog kisses. Yeah, I no, kiss him. You don't kiss me. There's, not, there's no such thing as a dog kiss. I'm the dominant one. <laughs> <laughs> I sniff his ass and give him the kiss <laughs> to assert my dominance. He gets in the bed with me. I'll fucking hump him. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of getting humped. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, get that hump roast. Hey, um, right after the break. We're going to have our Cairns and Darrens of the week, but we have uh, taters boiling downstairs and a big standing rib roast from Yeah, from Saturday. From smoked day. on Saturday and some au jus. Ooh, some au jus. It's going to be a fancy meal here. We're going to be a little uh, less energetic. Things are going to change after the break, but it's still going to be It's going to be a good shift, a good uh, meaty we'll shift. see you all in a minute. And an hour and a half later, we are back. We are back. We're back. <laughs> Bodies full of meat. Full of meat and taters and au jus. Uh, and uh, this fantastic drink from Vinny. Thank you very much for the... Uh, cheer- cheers to Vinny. For the Cucamonga <laughs> margarita. Oh, yeah. The ancho chili liqueur. I tasted it when Vinny was over earlier. I tasted a little bit on its own. Like and it was sort itself. of like... It was like thick like liqueur. Right. And then swallow. And then it's like that little hint of, of it, the spice. It, it kind of pops on you. But I took uh, two Pepsi before the whole thing started. Cause I, <laughs> it's, I think your re- regular thing is just Pepsi because, like, we're not making, like, soft drinks over here. They're nice and easy on the they're, stomach. They're, Everything's got acid and they, salt. They are not soft. We didn't do the salt rim, though. Yeah. Because the, between the au jus and the... I think we had enough salt. Yeah, because yeah. the, the, especially the outer rim of the, uh, of the prime rib. I salt cured it for a day. Rub salt oh, like outside, dry salt cured? Dry salt cured it and then rub all that off. And then we did... Uh, Mustard and a couple of like a, like a horseradish mustard rub on the outside, gotcha. so it kind of crisps crisps up in the smoke. Cri- 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 crisps, Because I never ta- I never tasted a. Because when I picked the little piece off of the outside, move that a little bit that way. When I picked the piece off of the outside, um, it was definitely super smoky. So I've never had like a, a rib roast that was super smoky on the outside, but still nice and. Yeah, oh, and it, the ketchup. Oh, oh man, it really, oh, man. it really sets. Someone it off. already commented on our uh, reel. They're like, "Ketchup? Are you fucking crazy?" Yeah. Like, obviously, nothing it's sets not off the a flavor joke. of a taste <laughs> like a steak, like some good ketchup. Well, you know what we do after the break. Oh, shit, week. it's the Karen of the week. It's the Karen of the week. Oh shit! Oh, shit. shit. Man, I think we're pretty good at that because, like, we never. We never hear the. And this is a good week because it's like, which one do we use? I know there was which uh, Karen, which Darren. Because like I was saying earlier, up until five thirty on Sunday, I was like, I don't fucking, I don't know if I have a like well, enough content. Th- and and uh, as it's been the last few weeks, this week's Karen and Darren brought to you by Grant Nelson. Uh, got electricity back two nights ago, so I was able to watch football <laughs> and enjoy his weekend in how New Orleans. Lo- how long had it been since the? He went power four went and a half days. Okay, that's with no bad. power. 
And uh, he, Grant's got his own little Darren of the week that we're going to have to mention is his neighbor, Ed. Ed, fuck you, Ed. <laughs> so Grant was going to get gas because they had, he had a generator. Ed had a generator. Ed's like, hey, I'll pay for your gas and mine if you go. But like, when there's a storm, going to get gas took him three hours. Yeah, and like, I don't even know if like gas stations would be open. They just or... had what they had left with like a, minim- like a, a maximum. Do you need to electricity get. to pump the gas out of the barrels? Like, um, are... Yeah, but probably random generators, I guess. Yeah, I guess. It's probably yeah. pressure ran with... That's what, that's what I'm wondering, if it's like pneumatic or something. Well, I'm sure the gas stations got their, their generator on no or whatever. Scientist. But uh, so he was like, you know what? Ed's going to buy my gas. I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll take care of this. So Grant had his two five-gallon gas tanks, and Ed was like, yeah, I'll bring some by. Ed showed up with eight five-gallon tanks, and Grant's like, uh, he's an SUV, not a truck, but an SUV. So he, like, put all 10 in his vehicle yeah. and drove, he said, about eight miles, and then was, like, overwhelmed with all the windows down, even with the caps on, oh, just wow, the smell yeah. of them. It doesn't matter, yeah. Ed had dirty-ass, nasty gas tanks that had yeah. gas all over the outside. So Grant turned around, went back took him back to Ed and was like, look, here's your money. I can't do this. And Ed was like. Oh, before he filled them up. He couldn't even get. He went 10 miles and had to go back. Oh, he was like, wow. The smell was making yeah. him get faint. Ed was furious. Like, Does Ed not have a truck with a fucking truck bed? Ed has an F-250. But Ed, Ed's about 60 and didn't want to make the journey. Thought he'd pay his way out of it. And Ed, Why don't he let him borrow the fucking truck then? Exactly. So Ed's a dick. Yeah, Ed's a dick. It sounds like it. Then the next day, Ed had gone and gotten his own gas, whatever. Grant looks up, gets up, looks over there. Ed's lawn. It's 9 a.m. Beautiful. Done up. He'd gotten gas for his mower, there's cleaned no, up. There's no fallen chainsaw. limbs in the yard anymore. No, nothing. Everything was beautiful. Ed's, <laughs> our, Ed's manicured yard looks good. Ed's out in the yard, lawn chair, drinking, yelling at the other neighbor about getting his mess on his side because Ed's a dick. And unlike most people during a storm, you want to yeah. try to help your neighbors. No, not Ed. Ed's got this guy over here using a fucking axe to chop wood while Ed has used a chainsaw yeah, to clean his own yard with up. With all of his gas. And it's not going to be like, hey, man, things are rough. We're yeah, neighbors. Because uh, the last one on Tybee where there was a lot of shit that had fallen, there's like two or three groups of people that were just driving around I, me with, and, with equipment. Brian Hertford and I went around and yeah. went to uh, Rob Bowman's parents' house, yeah. helped drag out carpet, all that shit, went to AJ's house. And because we just rode around, and we're like, you know, if we saw someone in their yard, we would stop yeah, and help. Yeah, I think a few people, I know Eric did it too. Yeah, um, shit, Eric Eric's from, the one that opened the bridge up because there was a yeah. tree down on the bridge, and Eric <laughs> put the chainsaw. He's like, I'm out here. I got I'm getting to, to my house. Yeah. And the cops were like, well, sir, you have to wait. He goes, well, then stop me. And yeah, just right. Drove yeah. on to Tybee. He's done that a few times. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah he's he's, he's kind of got a carte blanche when it comes to stuff like that. But um, so you're Karen, and that, well, like, we'll share a little bit of the Karen because my Darren's kind of small. But we mentioned it uh, in the opening, um, the Venmo on the back of the car. Well, don't put the Venmo on the back of your car if you're going to park in the middle of a fucking parking lot where no one can get in. And leave it overnight so no one can get by your stupid fucking car. That says, hey, it's Cassie's 21st birthday. Or a bachelorette party or whatever it was. Whatever the fuck it was, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, our friend Bailey, shout out to Bailey. She, uh, you, you you know, we put on the little, on the website, you know, know, you know what to do. So Bailey jumped right on it and uh, was like, you know, I'm going to send this girl some requests. So I don't want to uh, butcher this by not reading it appropriately. <laughs> and it says, uh, for an awful parking job at the Huckapoos that blocks the exit, exit, you owe me $5, basically. Oh, she requested $5, she requested $5, from, $5 from, from her Venmo. <laughs> which was uh, surprisingly rejected by Cassie. Oh, she rejected it? That's McDonkey crazy. fuck. And it said, she sent Bailey back one that said, find another spot, bitch. It's my weekend. How cool that was she? Her. So that was 5 to 15. Then Bailey sit went back. You literally parked in the middle of the exit. I watched multiple cars almost hit you. Hello. Have a fun, uh, fun being in everyone's way this weekend. Because Cassie sucks. <laughs> so somebody else that has access to our account. We'll, <laughs> I don't know who it was. We'll just uh, we'll call him me. Uh, I, uh, sent her, I sent her $1.75. Figured I'd throw in on the plan B. Thanks for the head, too. Pukey, pukey sign. <laughs> and uh, then emoji. she accepted that, took my dollar seventy. She took your dollar seventy five. So I sent her another for one for the dry hand job for twenty five dollar request. Driving school for the white privileged dry hand job union of Tennessee. <laughs> Was it a Tennessee tag on there? Oh no, I found her. <laughs> I found her. I found her on Facebook real quick. Well, I mean, if you're putting your shit out there, like for the whole Venmo world, exactly. To see, you know what I mean. And so she blocked me after that, whatever. But I went and found her, and she had like that privileged white boofy haircut you get when your mom put you in modeling when you were four years old yep and like the the, the glamour shot yeah hairdo. like yeah like your your dad's a uh 
televangelist preacher haircut, you know? <laughs> she, that's what she looked like. And you might get touched up a little bit by the oh, yeah. by, by the priest at the church. Yeah, so uh, Karen, Cassie, same thing. <laughs> Cassie you equals Karen suck. this week. Yeah, because you suck, and now Cassie and McCarran. Just like we talked about um, ever since I mentioned the EBT thing, and so, somehow an EBT situation didn't happen to me this week, but once, once you kind of say it, uh, once you kind of put it out into the universe, now I see the fucking Venmo shit everywhere. Oh, yeah, we're getting tagged in it constantly. Yeah, yeah. People we had multiple photos. other people send them things. We'll have yeah. to compile them and put them up on the Instagram. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll just Instagram. do a big compliment. She can see the greatest uh, Cassie Venmo <laughs> hits. But it's like... But, but, and it was on all three sides. Oh, I didn't realize that. It, was, it wasn't just on the back window? No, not on the back window. It was on both sides and, like, the other side. And it was in, like, literally to get in the back of the parking lot, you had to, like, just narrowly not hit her. Because I think when he and I came in in our cab, we had to go around it. Okay, so, yeah, just to explain, like, so the Huckapoo's parking lot, there's, uh, you can park on the out, outer sides, and then there's the inner, you know, you can you can sort of pull yeah. in in the center or pull in on the outside. So she was between the center and the outside, but, like, and it didn't even look like there had been other cars that were, like, forcing her to be in To be where she was. Position. Oh, yeah. You could have put, like, two golf carts between where her car yeah. was and should have been. What it looked like was she backed out and was like, nah, fuck this. I'm not, I'm yeah. not tr-, And didn't pull back into the. And then just left her car there overnight. Yeah, didn't pull back into the spot that she was in already. And she just fucking left her car there overnight. Because I've had to park there before at night in an awkward position. But before I leave and get in a cab and go home, I put my car in a regular spot because they've exactly, opened up yeah. by then. Or I'll park it on the street like a normal yeah. adult so it's not in everyone's way because yeah. you know. Whenever I play up there, I'll normally park in a spot that's not like a great spot but, uh, generally, but it's only because I'm unloading all my drums out of the car. But if I don't end up driving home that night, if I end up taking a cab, which happens like 90% of the time, I drink when I play. That's what we do. When you live a long way, it's like a <laughs> I hell know, of a journey. So fucking far away. But I always make sure I'll pull it into a spot because people always ask her like, "Is it okay if we park there on you know for yeah. the night?" I'm like, "Yeah, please don't drive. Just don't block. Just fucking park. In don't a block the dumpster. Yeah. Don't do that. You know, people yeah. constantly do that and they'll get put on the aficionado page on blast like, "This is your car. Yeah, come get it." But most of those people when they show up are humble and right, apologetic, yeah. and they're like, "Shit, man, I was fucked up last night." Yeah. And we'll be like, "Hey, thanks for not fucking driving." But yeah. instead of being like, "It's my weekend, bitch. It's my like, weekend, where bitch." Where does this fucking entitlement spot? shit come from? It's because her dad's a fucking televangelist. I'm oh like, yeah, you're my sweet angel. You can, yeah, you know, like I'm gonna get you that fucking that televangelist. She wants that on. Jesus three way. She, she was looking for that. She might have had one that night. Maybe it's because she didn't get fingered in church. I enough. just wonder. Um, and like you can almost you could probably tell if you saw it. Like I, I never like uh, I didn't work those nights that. I, I apparently that she was up there yeah it was or fine. whatever but uh i know that if i saw her in public i'd be like that looks like a fucking cassie oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, cassie cassie karen yeah. C- cassie with a k so with cars like this entire weekend um my darren it's just w- this one guy so down here on tybee uh there's a there's a walk there's a crosswalk like every two like maybe even every block it's about i think it's every block after like what like fourth maybe yeah once you turn the big curve like or whatever yeah. Where you hit a button and it flashes lights so that you and your family or whoever can walk across safely. And, like, if you're from down here, you're used to it. You know what I mean? Like, you see the blinking lights. You're like, hey, someone might be walking I'll, here I'll, or something. I'll cock block. When I see someone coming, I'll get oh, into I'll the other lane. Because people, Cause people yeah. like, come flying up. And, like, mm-hmm. you don't want to see someone get hit by a car without your phone ready. So you want to be in a – you don't want this dickhead thing yeah. to happen. And, like, you know, once they're through, you can yeah. move on. It's really, and you're on a fucking two mile island. Like you can't be in that much of a thirty. Yeah, you can't be in that much of a fucking rush to fucking get anywhere. So I pull up, and the the blinky lights are happening. But it was at the end of that one. Like so, they they had already kind of crossed. So traffic started moving pretty soon after I'd pulled up. Well, you know, two blocks later, another one was happening, and the car in front of me was so fucking pissed that it had to wait ten extra seconds, that it tried to pull left and get into the next lane to go around, not seeing that the family was crossing the fucking street, and they had to come to a skid. To and not run over a not, family? To not hit the fire. Well, uh, they had to come to a skid because there was another car that was Obeying waiting. the law? Yeah, waiting for the fucking family to get across. And they almost hit them in the fucking back. And that was just only, that was only one tiny example of me just driving. Like, uh, my trip to the grocery store is less than a mile from my house. But it takes you an hour when it there's all these damn Darrens driving around. Happened. Yeah, because it's like, how do you get so uh, impatient, like... Just like we were talking about the couples that come down here, they're like, hey, we come, we came to fucking relax. Not to speed down an you're island. You're not missing your reservation at the Rock House. Yeah. yeah I think you're gonna you know be what okay. I mean? Like, I think you're going to be okay. Like, no matter how bad it is, it's only going to take you at max 10 minutes if, yeah. you, if you know and where if you, you're going. if you beat that crosswalk, now it's going to take you nine and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Woo! Killed it. What are you going to do with all that time? 
because the, the the Darrens run rampant in traffic. It's a little. I got pulled over when they first put them up. Like, I mean, was that probably 10, 12 years ago? And like, I was coming through as they had hit the button, and like, I could have slammed on brakes, but they weren't going to make it to where I was. So I kept going. Cop pulled me over. He was like, "You, know, I pulled you over." I'm like, uh huh. Yeah. I told him what I did. He was like, "All right, go yeah. and let me go," because I was you accepting kn- yeah. of my yeah. of my problem. And I had three people in the car with open containers, so I was pretty. Oh wow, it. yeah. I was. Um, I got off work uh, pretty early one Sunday night, like three or four months ago, and I was. Uh, I was coming home and uh, my podcast ended. So I picked my phone up to yeah. switch the podcast or whatever. And I put it back down and I got pulled over. And he was like, I saw you. Because uh, you had doubt. Well, I don't know if it's just Georgia, but like in Georgia. The hands free thing. Yeah, you're not allowed to look at your phone at all, I guess. You know, unless it's like clipped up or something. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, I saw you look at your phone. I was like, I did. I, my podcast ended and I, and, I, skipped to the and, next I one. Skipped, and I skipped to the next one. And he was like, okay, cool. Thanks for being honest. Yeah, exactly. I tried. To, if I get pulled over, I know what I did. I'm going to yeah. be like, I did A, There's B no wrong. Fucking point. There's no fucking point. And even if, even if you are in the wrong, nothing's going to piss a cop off more than you fucking sitting there bullshitting with yeah. them. You know what I mean? Because that's wasting everyone's fucking time. You know yeah. what I mean? If I had like fucking, I don't know, if I had like a dead body in the trunk, yeah, I'm going to lie. Yeah, there could be a little more. <laughs> yeah, you know, a little like, more. Uh, no, sir. That's not, it's not a body that you smell. You know what I mean? No, that's me. But yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm just, you know, I've been sweating at work all night. I've been but on like, the beach. But that's simple shit, though. You know what I mean? Like, you could pull over for fucking, like, going 10 over and be like, yeah, I was. I was listening to System of a Down, and I got, I got excited. Yeah, and I, fucking, yeah. I started hitting the fucking gas just, pedal. You just couldn't, couldn't slow down. Yeah. But, yeah, because I, I get pulled over, all four windows down, car off, radio off, everything in my hand ready, 10 and 2. Yeah. You know, completely mindful of the officer. And most of the time, they're like, all right, yeah, thanks for being cool, not making my job more stressful than it already is. Because think about it like this. Like, they do, like, just as a bartender, like, I have a buddy that listens, and uh, he, works, he works in law enforcement. And he's like, he's like, the reason he and his buds connect with it so much is because like we do the exact same thing. We deal with the general public, yeah. right? So even at even in the bartending situation, if someone comes up and they're like, they know exactly what they want, and it's not like a bunch of faff between it. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, I would like a beer, and I'd like a shot, and this and that. We're gonna have the best fucking time because no one's bullshitting and wasting each other's time. I had this lady come in yesterday. She was like, I want you to make me a shot. I was like, okay, here we fucking go. I was like. What kind of liquor do you like? She's like, I don't know. Hmm. You don't know? What did you drink last time you was, had a liquor yeah, drink? I was like, do you want something straight or mixed? She's like, I don't know. So immediately I'm like, I, I fucking hate you. So I was about to pour like a shot of fucking straight Jack, but I was like, this is, this is going to be pointless. Like, no, I'm not going to prove anything to this fucking lady. Because like, she's not going to change the way she behaves. She's not going to get it. She's not going to fucking know. I made her a fucking white tea, and she's like, oh, my God. This is so great. I love this so much. I was like, uh, that's a... Um, Oh, I made up a stupid fucking name for a white it helicopter. So yeah, so that she would order it somewhere else, and they'd be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" That's what you got. See, I get people at work sometimes. They're like, you know, with dinner, I'll have a glass of red wine. I'm like, "All right, do you want, you know, light, medium, heavy, French, American, blah blah blah?" And they're like, "You know, just pick something." I'm like, "Uh, okay, you're having this, so I'll bring. I can bring them a taste, and then kind of go from there with it. So I'll bring them a taste of something, and be like, and like, what is it?'" I'm like. No, drink it first, yeah. and then I'll tell you what it is, because we're going to Pepsi challenge this bitch. Like, I don't know if you're going to like it, sure. but people have a preconceived notion about wines, and so they'll, if I tell them it's a Merlot, they're like, ah, right, before yeah. they try it. So I'm I make not them, drinking any fucking Merlot. Yeah, exactly. Thank weekend. you, Sideways, for ruining yeah. the Merlot industry. Um, so I'll just give them a little taste, and he's like, oh, this is great. I'm like, thanks. Well, um, so with, uh, something that I've ran into is people that ask for suggestions, like, and I'm not doing pairings. You know what I mean? I'm not like. Uh, yeah, no, you don't have flights. Yeah, we don't. I'm not like, ooh, with a pepperoni slice, you're gonna love a Bud Light uh, <laughs> draft, though, because you don't want the, you don't want the overcarbonated bottle yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? But people ask me for suggestions. They'll be like, hey, I want a drink that's uh, got bourbon in it, but I don't want it to whatever. And I'll make them something, and they'll be like, I don't like this. I'm like, well, don't fucking ask for my suggestion. Yeah, if you're not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make something along the guidelines but the, you gave me. But that's why you ask the the questions of like, and so. so when they're asking you what, what they should have, instead of asking them, like, well, would you like a cab or a fucking, or a, or a Zen or a this, you're like, do you like... Yeah, so I, give me a taste profile Yeah, do you, you want like to follow along super with. super dry? Do you want it to be fruity? Do you want it to be... Some people are dicks, and they'll be like, oh, I want a, I want a Chardonnay. I'm like, oh, do you want buttery, oaky, or right in the middle? And they're like, oh, definitely super oaky. And they're arrogant about it. So I'm like, here's the most buttery Chardonnay I've got. And they're like, this is delicious. I'm like... This you is don't so even know okay. what the fuck you want. <laughs> know, you right. don't even know what the fuck you want. You just want to say a buzzword you heard one time. Right. So you yeah, sound yeah. cool. 
But it's like, and that's the thing. Most people come on that. Uh, I that bet incision. Cassie ordered drinks like that. No, no. I'm telling you, Cassie was like, could I have a double of whatever? And then you make her a double. And she's like, I can't toss it. Oh, it's so strong. <laughs> or yeah, yeah. Like, this is way too strong. It's martini is strong. Right when I, oh, I'm, I forgot to fucking mention this. Right when I got to work uh, yesterday, we had a, so we were at an hour and a half wait for food pretty much all night. And it was just like to go orders. Right when, right when I came in. We had the first of like three twenty-five pizza to go orders. Jesus twenty-five Christ. pizzas per per order. So this group they ordered twenty-five pizzas, and then they brought in these three like uh, you know how uh, when you make like uh, if you go to a wedding and they have like lemonade and sweet tea and whatever it's in yeah. like the tall jug and you got the little spout at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, self-serve your fucking your tea or your whatever. They brought in three of those and asked us to make Long Islands. <laughs> How do you even gauge the cost of something like that? Well, so here's the thing. A uh, little insider, uh, oh, I little know, insider I tip here. Going. Our Long Island is a pre, it's not pre-mixed altogether. The liquors are pre-mixed. So it's a big to half gallon. To save you from the five-bottle pour. From, yeah, from doing all that. And now if, like, if people ask, like, hey, could you make me one with, you know, Tanqueray and fucking Bacar? You know, if they want, like, spe- I'll like do it. the top shelf. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. But, like. Anyone who drinks Long Islands, like, there's no... It's what, never... Yeah. For me, when I work, I'm like, okay. You're immediately you, like, oh, shit. You want a Long Island here? Here, oh, yeah. Okie Or do you have a frozen drink yeah. maker? I'm like, yeah. Look, no, <laughs> yeah. they don't have frozen <laughs> right. drinks in France. So um, they, uh, so we have, like, just... They're pre-mixed, all the liquors, at least. So all we have to add is the sour mix and the uh, Coca-Cola and a lemon or whatever. So we have half-gallon bottles. I dumped one into one of the things. I filled it up most of the way. I was like, all right, sour mix and Coke on top. That bottle is like fucking, I don't know, probably like 11 bucks or something like that. I was like, it's 50 a piece for these things. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that seems reasonable. But it is reasonable if you're asking a bar to make a fucking jug. Yeah, that's not, you're not, you're not like you're advertising, we sell jugs of liquor. Right, yeah. And I don't even know if it's necessarily legal, but whatever. Who, who uh, well, they shit. took it in the parking lot. They didn't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They drink it outside. They that's put it on the back of the truck. Well, there, they there. went on the cornhole deck down yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's, exactly that's where what they did. Drank it. But we ran out of the mix like halfway through the third. So uh, you had to do the no. So all I did was I took one bottle of well run, or well gin and one bottle of well vodka and just <laughs> like don't yeah. have. I mean, you're drinking Long Island. How classy point, are what you? What the this fuck point? does it matter? And how are they going to fucking notice anyways? So that was literally the first thing I walked into yesterday at work. But then it was pretty quiet after that for a minute. But then all of a sudden, like I was like, what's you know, why is the food starting to take so long? And I would go back there and there'd be fucking, I mean, ten pie order, twenty pie order, ten pie order, twenty. And these are all order. to go orders, pretty much. All to goes, yeah. That's a lot of fucking That had already, like, because uh, I'm sure I, I was working outside, so I uh, wasn't on the phones or anything, but I'm sure they had taken the phone off of the hook inside. Oh, yeah, so it was just people coming in and ordering and them. We have, and I had plenty of people at the outside bar coming in fucking ordering tons of Tons of pie orders? Yeah, but I'd be like, hey, look, man, it's a fucking hour. And like I said earlier, I fucking put the time on the ticket. Well, in, in the realm of people coming in and getting irritated about things, one of our local dining establishments, Stingrays, uh-huh. has a great new sign outside. A bartender or server, server will seat you shortly. We appreciate your patience. If you're out of patience, feel free to fill out an application. Yeah, right. <laughs> gold. Gold. Just, you know, look, if you don't like it, then help. I wonder if the, and Stingrays gets it the fucking worst. So if you're not familiar with Tybee and Stingrays, like they're like on that end of the island. Which That's, is, yeah, they're yeah. the busiest restaurant on that side of the island. 100% for sure. sure. They even built like a third deck just to fucking be just, able to house all the people that come they get, in. Because you ride by there. Any weekend, and there's 20 It doesn't matter. Outside. It could even be in the fucking off season, and there's still fucking. And there's packs. There's only so yeah. much you can do in a kitchen that size. Yep. And people get the most mad there, too, for whatever reason. Well, see, that it's just their, their clientele that they draw. It's like the fucking. It's the dregs of society. It's the fucking they're, they're rednecks. The crab Shack light. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's the people that can't find the Crab Shack because it's in a different neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's really hard to get. I can't there. imagine what they deal with there, like when it comes to like customers being pissed off about like waiting and shit like that, because you can tell like, any customer all day, like, this is how long it's going to be. Yeah. This is what it is. The wait is this long, this and that, and they want to add. They want to seem cool, right yeah, away. Be good. Well, it's it's totally fine. Go play with the alligators. Fuck it. Fucking fifteen minutes later, they're like, "Where's my?" It's yeah. It's and then this, especially on holiday weekends, a lot of people are traveling that don't normally travel, so they make a big to do of it. So they don't know how to even mm. remotely behave socially. And they're just so ready to be in somewhere and do something. And it's like, hey man, you could probably walk up the street somewhere, and there might be something that's less busy. Yeah, but but you want one, this food. Then if you want this, this is what you have to wait for. And we're not busy for no fucking reason. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people, it's obviously because people like it, you know? Even though I don't eat there. When's the last time you ate the Crab Shack? It's been a while. 
When's the last time you were at the Crab Shack? No, no clue. It's been, it's been we're all from Tybee, and we haven't been yeah. there forever. Yeah, but you know, Chimney Creek is like not actually Tybee. It does feel like it's a, it's ten miles from yeah, here. Yeah, but might I, I, mean, I grew house. up in Chimney Creek, and I still didn't feel like I lived on Tybee. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I mean, you can ride your bike from there to here, but it's there's a, <laughs> it's a, quarter, a quarter mile yeah. of like, am I gonna die on this bike ride? <laughs> Especially fucking, yeah, try and ride a bike down that fucking road on a holiday weekend like this. Fuck no, that shit, No, nope, nope, nope. Because people get, I mean, like when I was coming today, I was just one car behind me. Yeah. I'm doing 60. You know, I'm going five over. As soon as I get over the Lazaretta Creek Bridge, he passed me. And I'm like, yeah. all right, good luck, buddy. Did you do that or did it? I, that? It did it on its own, but I think I helped it a little bit. By you just, that down. last little bit heat of your body yeah, gave right. it the pressure it needed to pop. Like a 30-second beach masturbation <laughs> session. <laughs> all it takes me is 30 seconds, baby. Hey, I'm surprised they caught me. I know. I know. I, I'm surprised she didn't like hang out longer. You know, get another one. It's only 30 seconds. Why not? If it get only two? takes you 30 seconds, you could probably pop another one off pretty quick. Um, also, you could find any dumbass guy on this island and do it for you. I had this. Um, it was like, and it was just. It was like right when we started to finally get busy last night. After I texted you, which was like the fucking nail in my. Coffee. I know because you responded, and I was like, "That's whatever." I sent you. I was not expecting a response until yeah, 2 a.m. Like, how the fuck did he respond so quickly? So uh, right before we start getting busy, and uh, I talked to someone about this before, and we talked about it on the podcast before about like uh, people that go into places where they force you to uh, have an interaction because like if you work at a bank, someone walks into a bank, yeah, like the yeah. bankers have to talk to you. You go get your haircut, like the, yeah, fucking, you're, the person you're stuck, your, you're yeah. stuck in this conversation. So this, uh, it, they were like a biker couple, and they came in, and they sat down, and we, I was uh, stocking Classic City Loggers right at that moment which is the beer from Athens, uh, Creature Comforts, whatever. Okay, yeah. Tall boy cans. They're good. So they're like, what are those? I was like, Classic City. It's sort of brown like Yingling. It's like, I think it's a little bit better than Yingling, whatever. So I give it to them. They crack them open, or I crack them open, hand them to them. They're drinking. They're like, yeah, this is a wit. What? I'm like, yeah, it's, it's not, but whatever. I don't care. Sure, it, it, whatever you want to call whatever. it. So they're chilling, and I was like, you guys going to eat? Uh, I'll get you a menu or something. And they're like, no, nah, we're just riding the Harley around this weekend. I was like, okay, cool. Cool. Don't eat food All for right, that. Cool. Yeah, cool. We're done. About five minutes later, they're like, the, the woman was like, hey, um, I'd like to see a menu if I could. I was oh. like, oh, you've, uh, you've changed. If only someone would offer one yeah, to I know, you. I know. Yeah, I'm so I sorry. Like, you changed your mind. And I was like, I thought she was being like obtuse with me. But as the, as, as the time went on, I started noticing that when I asked her husband for the menu, he was, he was supposed to say yes. Oh, okay, okay. So he he fucked up. So he was fucking up. So I thought she was directing that shit towards me. So then, I'm I'm overhearing them a little bit, and she's like, she's like, I've got fucking uh, sunscreen in my. I can't read the menu. Read it for me, Richard. So this lady is fucking dominating this dude like terribly. So the guy. So he's riding on the back of the bike. <laughs> I think she, he's the one. She's hugging the her. Horn. He's hugging her from behind. So by proxy, he's sort of starting to try and steer that uh, energy my way. Oh, yes. Please you know, say be random bartender guy. But I was like, so, and so she's being like, uh, she's like, tell him that we need to get this or get that. Like, she's trying to, like, position me between Yeah, them yeah, two. you're, you're going to pro- solve their problems the dude's, their whole marriage. The dude's cucking cuck more and more and more and more. And she's, like, getting more, like, fucking emboldened and, and fucking and crazy as a, each moment passes. Now, we're at the point where anything that happens around us, if someone brings food out, she's like, we could have ordered that about 20 minutes ago, Richard. Damn, Richard is in all kinds of problems. We are, here. I mean, and I'm like, how are they going to fucking ride on a bike back to fucking wherever the fuck they're from? Just going to pull them back to the side. So they're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. I'm, I'm kind of like, hey, do you want to go ahead and get some food or whatever? She's like, I, I'm still looking at the menu. Richard, do you want anything yet? And he's kind of like cucking out. So he's like, no, baby, I'm, I'll, I'll be ready when you are. Of course, they wait for the next 20 minutes until now. You're slammed, and there's an hour and a half wait. Super fucking slammed. Now, I've been trying to engage them to, to try and, like, move it along a little bit fucking quicker. to you know Because I know the storm's about to fucking come, and it's about to be fucking crazy. Then they start with the shit, like, so uh, how long you been working here? I was like, about 11 years. You guys going to order food or anything? I don't know. No, we're just on the bike. They're like, uh, so uh, y'all get a lot of people like this all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're busy like this all the time. Did you, did you need another beer or anything? Like, no, yeah. we're fine with the beer. you're inching away from yeah, them slowly? The, the moment I would walk away and do anything, they're like, hey, uh, we're just wondering if we could get a beer over here. I'm like, do you want another Classic City? Uh, you know, did you like it? What else do you get? <laughs> well, no, no. They were like, no, I like this. I was like, oh, you like the wit. The it's wit beer? A, the it's brown not wit? not a fucking wit. Yeah. So... Finally, they're like, all right, we're going to get some pizza. They'd seen some fucking slices come out or whatever. So I was like, look, it's going to be like at least an hour, whatever. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we're cool, man. We're just going we're just gonna chill and hang out, you know, whatever. So I was like, this is not going to fucking go well. 
45 minutes passed. They were like, <clears throat> they were like, uh, could you check on that food for us? I was like, yeah, for sure. Walked in the back. Food wasn't ready. I came back out. I was like, it'll be another 10 minutes. They were like, totally fine. I was like, what'd you say? But they finally calmed down. All of a sudden, they got their fucking, like, they were the least fucking problem that I had all night. The, the people that I assumed were going to be, we're going like, to keep getting when worse, I told, worse When I told them an hour that after the 20 minutes. The malignant tumor uh, customers. Exactly, yeah, exactly. But the only thing was, like, by, by the end of it, like, she kind of stopped, like, uh, emasculating him a little bit. But towards the end, she was like, uh, I, I handed him the, the ticket, and he goes, uh, what does it say on there, honey? Or he goes, hey, ma'am, what do I owe you? She goes, it's on the fucking ticket, Richard. <laughs> He now, ended up, she, now she can read. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Now, now the fucking the sunscreen is out of her she eye. She used a pepperoni to wipe the sunscreen out of yeah, her right. eye. Exactly. She's just like, oil on oil. He tipped me 100%. I was like, fuck. What the fuck? What is this bizarro world that's happening right now? The holiday weekends, and this is, for all intents and purposes, a pretty mundane one as compared to how they, I mean, remember how bad the 4th of July was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is kind of a, a, t- a step down. But then after this, you're not really... Nothing you don't major know until we don't know that though. That's true. Because I went in, I went into work this weekend thinking like, oh, it's gonna be like mild, you know? No, I wasn't ready for yesterday. I got thrown into the fire pretty quick. But like, even the even though there's not like holidays necessarily, this year has been so unprecedented just because. Yeah, because it's been you know because of COVID. We shit, started. Yeah. We started like people haven't been out for the whole past year. Our summer started fucking March first, and uh, I went to the rental company today to pay the rent. And they were like, uh, they were asking me, they're like, when do you think this is going to end? I was like, I don't fucking know. Because they've been booked up. They're booked up through like November. Damn. And they have, and it's one of the smaller like uh, STVRs down here. But, you know, they have plenty of fucking properties. We're one of the only long-term rental properties that they have. But they're like, yeah, we're booked up through like November. Like everything. Well, it looks like it might be going on for quite That's some time. That's what I'm saying. Though. But I, I, And like people will find an excuse like whether it's a football game or. Well, see, I got to figure like, so if the Georgia game's at noon. Or 3.30. Is your night a little less? Mm. The only thing about that is, depending on whether the game gets up, the only trouble that it ever brings me, really, is if the game is ending around 4.30 to 5.30. The shift change area, The yeah. shift change is a fucking bitch because no one wants to close out with the first people until the game's over or whatever. Right, so that's... And I don't want to take over their fucking tab because, like, you know, they've had... Depending on how bad the daytime bartender wants to leave... Yeah, they might have if to If they want hang. to leave fucking $200 worth of tickets... Yeah, on you, the fucking bone, then that's fine. But like, I, I don't, I'm, I don't want them to have to do that. Yeah, you don't want to take somebody else's money they've earned for three and yeah, a half exactly, hours of dealing but, with these idiots. But that means they have to sit around and wait for that Oof. shit to be over. Yeah, so it's especially with fucking Georgia games. I don't know what it is about the fucking Southeast, but they love to play at fucking noon and, and three thirty. And then the the, week, the bye week is usually the week of Pirates Fest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and then uh-huh. NFL games, all the fucking Falcons games start at four thirty for some fucking reason. So yeah. right, so right when I'm getting to work, all the daytime games are ending right at fucking four thirty because the next set of so that's even bigger clusterfuck. You got people showing up for the four thirty game, and people leaving from the noon game. And you can't figure out what you what can't without. do. And yeah, and it's just like and everyone fucking wants to, like when people are watching games, every moment there's a break, like uh, commercial break, beer, two shots, halftime, you know, quarter break, fucking end of the game. They all want something all at the same time. So the moment there's a break in the game. 16 people who have been sitting not realizing that their beer was empty and they could have ordered it yeah, could have just while the game hand, was on. Hand yeah. me a beer between these. All you got to do is take that beer and set it with the, like closer to the edge of the. Yeah, I don't know. That's the fucking, that's the universal sign. For It's empty. I can see it's empty also because it's, it's a wit. And it's but Cassie through. would never do that. <laughs> no, no. Cassie doesn't know how oh, to watch fucking football. God, God, Cassie. Well, that was a good time, man. It was a good time. Well, uh, happy Labor Day to all you unemployed motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Remember, uh, we're on a, we, we have an email address, from behind the barcast at gmail.com. We are on Instagram, at from behind the barcast. We have a P.O. Box, P.O. Box 191, Tybee Island, Georgia, 31328. And we're going to give away one shirt, anything under a double XL, if you leave a fucking a bartending story on anchor.fm. It could be any behind. service industry story. Any as long service, as it's service yeah. industry. Don't as long give me a story about yeah. you standing behind a lady at Walmart. Unless it's an EBT Those are for me. I tell, I tell a story about the ladies behind Walmart. The EBT world. <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. Thank you all. Cheers.